How does the split split list inlet work? Now, irrespective of manufacturer, this is essentially what a split split list will, inlet will look like. So you will have a purge flow coming out the top. Um, and the, the purge flow is to take away any septum bleed and just keep your, the top of your liner clean. You've got your carrier gas going in. The flow through the carrier gas is controlled by pressure restrictors and various sensors. And then you've also got your split line coming out. The split line coming out, depending on whether you're doing split, split list, as we'll see in the later slide, is either open or closed. And all of these are controlled by restrictors. So in split list mode, split list mode is where we want everything that we inject to go onto our column. So whilst it does the injection, we've got a flow coming in fire our carrier, a small flow coming out the purge. But as the injection takes place, the split valve is closed which means that everything coming from the carrier from your injection is then passing onto your separation column. Typical liners that we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use a single tapered liner to focus everything onto the uh, column. And we're going to have a, depending on whether we're doing a hot needle injection or a cold needle injection, we'll have glass wall or not glass wall. Typically these liners have always got roughly a volume of about a mil, so we've got a good volume. We then need to think about the transfer onto the column. Now we need to calculate this. So we need to think about what solvent are we injecting, what the injection temperature is, what the inlet temperature is, and what the column head pressure is, what the flow going onto the column is. And we need this time to be roughly two times the solvent volume once it expands to allow it to all a good 90 to 100% pass onto the column. This is really important because if we run short on this, we'll get really irreproducible injections. Now it sounds like a lot of things we need to think about, but the good thing is that practically every software has what's called a vapor volume calculator. So in this, we'll select what solvent we're using, the size liner we've got, the temperature, the injection volume, and the pressure on the head of the column. For example, in this case, we can see that the vapor volume of a one microliter injection of ISO octane is 0.15 mil. Uh, we can also see what the liner volume is, and this is really important because we don't want this vapor volume to ever exceed what is the liner volume, uh, because this will cause issues like back flush into some of our lines and would cause carryover, etc. But what we can see is we've got 0.15 mil. If we've got a flow rate of one mil a minute, that means that everything's going to come through in less than half a minute. So our split list time, we would set, say, for half a minute. Obviously, other solvents expand more, and therefore we need to take this into account. 